All right, Breaker Bro 23. So in this video today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to repair a clogged fuel line. The problem with this lawnmower is, is it will run for, oh, three or four, maybe five minutes, and then it'll act like it's running out of gas. And then when you turn the choke on, the motor will continue running for another minute or two and when you have a problem like that that is generally a fuel delivery issue whether it's a clogged fuel line or uh, a clogged filter now this more actually uh, developed this problem last week but it's been raining here in the northwest so much i just haven't had a chance to come out and mow so there is a little bit of fuel in here but that's not enough to actually go from here and into the carburetor and actually uh, last week this filter was actually bone dry. So this has happened to me before on uh, lawnmowers in previous years, and it's just this fuel line goes to crap with this ethanol fuel that we're running here nowadays. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys how to remedy this situation. So stick with me. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is get the fuel out of the tank. I've got a half a tank of fuel in here. Uh, really good fresh fuel, ethanol free, which is what I prefer to run in these motors. Uh, today's gasoline is just terrible and it's really hard on equipment. So what we're going to do is we're going to dismount the tank, we're going to drain it, and then replace this fuel line. And as I notice here, uh, my uh, both pieces of my fuel line are bad. I've got the one that goes from the tank to the filter that is uh, plugged, and then I've got the one that goes from the filter to the actual carburetor itself, and that is messed up. So here's what we're gonna do. With pliers, we're gonna use just pliers, good pliers. We're gonna take off this fuel line. Now, as you can see here, I hope, hopefully I got my camera set up correctly. But even though I've got half a tank of fuel, I just gotta a few drops coming out so that's not a, that's not enough to feed the, uh, the demands of this engine so what I'm gonna do is take this tank out this is just a 3 8 inch wrench that I'm using we have a tank mount nut on or bolt on on both sides of the tank I'm going to take this clamp off and slide it all the way off there and take it out of there so I can push this tube through. Once I push the fuel line through, I can pull the tank. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain it. And I did not get a funnel to do that. So we're going to take a little pause here and I'm going to go get a funnel. Okay, so I've sourced a funnel. I've got a clean funnel, an empty gas can that is clean. Like I say, I've got fresh clean fuel already, but see, this isn't, this isn't enough flow. So we're gonna get that transferred over. Eat your heart out, Al Gore. Okay, we have a pretty empty tank now. So we'll move this out of the way. So what I'm gonna do now is take my pliers and remove this clamp. And you just, you know, don't use needle nose. You know, those are the not, not the proper pliers for this job. What you're gonna do is just take it, loosen that up like that take that off the inside of my tank is very clean but look at that this is what ethanol fuel does to uh, rubber hose rubber fuel line stuff shag nasty stuff um, 
Anyway, this sucker's clogged. So, like, I can try to look through the tube. I know it's hard to see on camera, but you cannot see daylight. So, we're going to replace this. So, what I did is I went to O'Reilly's, and I just bought some, uh, some Gates fuel line. I like the Gates stuff a lot. It's quarter inch, which is what these lawnmowers use. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to match the fuel line up the new to the old. So I'm going to cut it off approximately right here. I'm going to take a wooden block, sit down here and take a razor knife. Don't cut these fuel lines or any hoses with uh, dikes or uh, side cutters or anything like that. And we're just going to make a nice clean cut. And I do this on a piece of wood because uh, you know, I don't want to scratch anything, you know, the lawnmower. It's not the best of shape, but uh, I don't I don't really need to uh, scratch it up or possibly even break my blade. So we're going to put the new fuel line on. Just going to work it up there like so. Get it all the way up. Now the fuel line has a natural curve in it. So I'm going to go like this. Right? Then we're going to put that back on. Before we do that, can't forget the clamp. So we're going to take our clamp. So a lot of folks will replace the clamps, and you could do that if you want to. I know if you buy the kit from Briggs and Stratton, it's like nine, nine, ten, eleven dollars, something like that. But honestly, as long as you don't abuse these clamps and force them, you don't really need a new one. That's up to you. That's always optional. But I've never had a problem with that. So I'm going to reinstall the tank. First of all, I'm going to guide it through the little hole. Pull that end out. And I'm just going to kind of get these bolts started. I usually don't like to cinch everything up until I actually get the project done. Just in case. You never know. It's just like Murphy's Law, you do that. And you gotta take the sucker back apart and yard the tank out again. Okay, we'll just kinda give her a little love tap there. All right, so now what we've got is we got the cops coming. I think they're looking for me, oh no. now we've got this taken care of. We've gone from the fuel tank to the filter. This fuel filter does not need to be replaced. You can replace yours if you would like. This fuel filter is only a one season old and it looks pretty good. It's got a little bit of dirt in there probably from here but I don't have a another fuel filter on me at the moment. So again with the pliers we're going to take this compression clamp off slide it back. Now this is a plastic fitting on the side of your carburetor, so hold both sides. Carefully pull it off. You can slide that clamp off if you'd like. Do the same here. Now the fuel was flowing pretty good through this one. But we're going to we're going to replace it because of these cracks. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but they are there. Ah, let go. Oh. So, I broke the filter. All right, we're gonna have to go and uh, get another filter. Okay, so I sourced uh, another uh, fuel filter. So this is the one that I broke. This one's a year old. This one's a new one. So the fuel flow goes this way. The easiest way to remember that is the white cap portion goes toward the carburetor. There's also a small arrow, but I have seen Chinese versions of these without this arrow. 
So just remember, it goes that way. If you see the cap, the cap goes that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip this over here. We're going to slide that little compression clamp on there. Then what I'm going to do is get my block again. I'm going to take this clamp off of here. Now, like I say, if you use pliers, you're not going to ruin these. If you use needle nose this is not the way to go so don't do it all right so we've got our clamps what i'm going to do now is take and match my fuel hose up or i could just go like this and just say okay this is this is my length that i need and then just go to here let's just see what the oem one was the oem one was a little bit long so i think i'm just going to measure it out here and kind of we don't really need to go quite that long. So I'm going to cut this right about here. Again, on the wooden block. What I did is I went to uh, um, O'Reilly's Auto Parts and I first bought one of those little uh, plastic uh, containers. It's a Prestone brand and it supposedly has two feet of few quarter inch fuel line in it. Well, I pulled it out at O'Reilly's and, and I looked at it and it's, you know, it's only like this long. I'm like, no, that's not two feet. And the part count, the parts counter guy goes, no, that's two feet. And I'm like, nah, it doesn't look right. And I, and I didn't even think to bring my tape measure out, nor did the parts counter guy. I bring it home. I got like 16 inches of line. I was kind of ticked. So what I did is I took it back and then he just went and got me some bulk line. Actually, I think this Gates line is better than the uh, the Prestone junk that he's trying to sell me. Anyway, that's funny, but... All right, now we're going to put this back on. And I've seen some people put a little bit of motor oil on there or uh, some spit or something like that. I guess you could. Um, but I just... Put it on without that you know oil motor oil will actually eat the rubber so you don't really want that on there okay so now we have a good clean connection it's not too tight it's not going to crimp up in here or anything like that um, it's not going to sag down you don't want too much line it's kind of a sloppy job so let's get these clamps going here again oops this is actually why you don't use needle nose this clamp is a little buggered up It'll hold, it'll work. Getting a little bit, a little buggered up. Okay, we've got those clamped off. We're looking good. So let's see if we get fuel in there. When we fill up the tank, should flow just fine now. Look at that. Fills right up. Look at that. We are flowing. We are good to go. Yeah, this uh, ethanol fuel, this 10% ethanol stuff is just terrible. I don't know whose bright idea that was. You know, I understand to make one gallon of ethanol, it takes 10 gallons of fuel to produce one gallon of ethanol, or maybe it was eight gallons of fuel. By the time the farmer prepares the field, plants the corn, harvests the corn, uh, does their distilling process, however they do that, and then delivers it to the refinery to mix in there. Ethanol free fuel is just literally a waste. It's just amazing. I don't, I don't know whose brilliant idea that was. And speaking of brilliant ideas, I lost my fuel cap. There we are. Okay, I'll zoom in for a little bit better shot. We'll see if we can get that. Okay, so as you can see, we've got uh, uh, plenty of fuel in the filter now because the fuel can now flow through that hose. So let's see if it works. She runs. 
That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so, you know, we've completed the project. We're gonna take our little 3 8 inch driver and tighten down our, our fuel tank. That's all finished. But, just for the heck of it, let's see what that fuel line, that clogged fuel line looks like. So remember, this is coming from the tank, like so. I know never use dikes, but this, this line is thrashed anyway, so. We're just going to cut this stuff open. We're going to see what it looks like. Okay. So I've got a little rod here that I'm going to try to push the gunk out here and see what happens. Oh yeah, see? So this is what ethanol fuel does to these fuel lines. Some of that may be a bit, little bit of dirt buildup, but, you know, I strain my gas before I put it in the tank but uh this is definitely bad fuel line it just eats it alive so there you go all right guys well i hope this helps this is you know the lawnmower i'm doing this on is a is a kind of an elderly craftsman riding mower she's an old one but a goodie but um this pertains or this technique or this problem um with not getting fuel delivery to the motor is pretty much standard for any piece, any lawnmower, any piece of equipment. So if you don't see fuel uh, feeding into this filter, that's the problem right there. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave those down below. Please don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you think this video uh, was worth it. And hopefully I helped you. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And again, please subscribe. Thank you.